I'm alone tonight. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. Spoke too soon. Mm, no, it can't be thought. I did give him that tea, you know. Well, whoever it is, we don't want any. Get rid of him. Quick. Oh. Oh, uh, hi. Karen. Hi. Come on in. Okay. Uh -huh. Well. Oh, boy. No, hi to you. I just came by to, to say hi to Scott. Well, he's you. gone out for a while. Okay, I, I'll head on out. Wait a minute. What's wrong? Don't take it easy on me. Hey, he's not worth it, buddy. Dr. Scanlon, you got a grip, and I mean now. Oh. Dr. Scanlon. Where's Dr. Scanlon? Dr. Scanlon. 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 Dr.
Would you like a radish or a carrot, perhaps? Okay. Hello? It's Ellen. What's wrong? Oh, you can tell over the phone. Years of experience. Greg Cooper was just admitted. You're kidding. He was in a car accident, which he probably caused, but that's beside the point. Anyway, things got very ugly very fast. Were any of the interns there? One of them totally ignored a direct order of mine. Another would have killed Cooper if he hadn't been stopped. Where's Cooper now? Upstairs. We had to put a chest tube in. Do you think we can get together? I, I could really use your input. Sure. Listen, I know it's late, and uh, this can wait till tomorrow, if you have the time that is. Your timing's perfect. I'll be right over. See you when you get here. Hey, is this a bad time? Couldn't be worse. Come on in. What can I do for you? After what happened tonight, I, I just thought maybe we could... Tonight discuss. wasn't exactly typical. But in one way or another, you can expect a lot more of this soon. I'm sure. By the way, I meant to compliment you. You and Ramsey were aces when we were working on that police officer. <laughs> yeah. We thought of everything. Except how to save his life. You do what you can, and no one can expect more. I know that. Fine. I'm okay. You're okay. I'm not all that sure about you. Well, I really should be going. Oh, why? Are you, um, on duty? No. Oh. But, uh, come on. You should stay. Kevin sort of insisted you stay, member. I kind of assumed he was being polite. No. That's not what he was doing, actually. Actually, he was being overprotective. He has been that way ever since the day that I told him that, um, I'm pregnant. She says in passing. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. Oh, that's so great. How, do, how does it feel? Mm. It feels very pregnant. Pregnant. <laughs> With wonderful possibilities. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Jagger and I used to talk about having kids. Hmm. Used to. Uh, as in past tense. That means you decided not to? No, no, it's just I can't even get them on the phone nowadays, <laughs> much less plan a family. Yuck. That must be um, very lonely sometimes. I'm surviving. Ah, uh, surviving. Well, yeah, surviving's fine, but, um, you know, you do need somebody to talk to every once in a while, like maybe a friend. Well, I did have a friend. Oh. I did, but I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> Would that uh, did friend happen to be <laughs> Joe Scanlon? Why do you ask? Oh, never mind. Me and my big mouth. No, really, I want to know. Why, why do you think that? Um, well, for example, you were very concerned over the outcome of that hearing. And uh, he was with you again last night here. And he did also help you find that special apartment that you found. So, mm -hmm. hey, what am I saying? You know, none of those things could mean anything or they could mean something or not. I, I'm not saying that Joe and I aren't friends. We're good friends. Maybe some people would say... Soulmates. What? Oh, I didn't say anything. Your silence speaks volumes. Oh, no, no, no. It's none of my business. But? But? Okay. To me, when a very attractive woman and a very attractive man get together, you know, I think it takes a special knack just to stay friends. I, of course, do have that knack. So your male friends don't misinterpret the relationship. Does Joe? Yeah, he did. He, he kissed me. Oh! No. Does that surprise you? No, actually, I can't say that it did surprise me. So maybe Joe wasn't misinterpreting anything, huh? Can you believe Cooper sitting there saying that crap about Karen? I swear to God I could have killed him. Janet, Joe, okay? Now, I've seen this mood before. You were ready to tear somebody's head off before you ever saw Cooper. Now, what's really going on? Frank, how much more do you need? I have got all day, Joe. I can, I can wait. I'm just so sick of it. What? All of it. Well, that narrows it down. Everything I thought was right turns out to be wrong. I am so sick. I'm so sick and tired of screwing up. 
I feel like taking everything and just throwing it, you know? Yeah, well, that is not enough. Yeah, says who, Frank? Says the guy who put you through med school. That is not fair. Yeah, well, life is not fair, Joe. If it were, I'd be playing, playing pro ball somewhere. Mom and Dad would be enjoying life. You have to play the hand you are dealt and stop bellyaching about it. You know what? Do me a favor. Take your lectures somewhere else, because I'm not in the mood. Believe me, I would rather be anywhere but here. Julie had to treat Cooper today. You know how that made her feel? Frank, why don't you go be with Julie? No, I would rather stick around and catch another episode of the Joe Scanlon Traveling Self-Destruction Show. Frank, tune out. Then. No. Why not? Because you are my brother and I love you. And I'll be damned if I am going to stand around while you take your God-given brains and talent and throw them in the trash. Any more questions? What do you really think of me? A real pain in the neck, you know that? Yeah, well, it runs in the family. I love you too, man. You kiss me and I'll back you. Come on, man. I'll walk you back to the nut house. And what exactly do you know about me? Well, I know that when you see Greg Cooper, it has some sort of connection for you. To that person you told me about, the one you lost. Oh. Well, you're right. Someone in your family, wasn't it? I thought I'd pretty much left it behind. The same Cooper. Hey, don't be all alone with this. It was my older brother. He was, uh... Everyone thought he was. This golden boy. Especially my father. And in a way, Buddy was. Yeah, well, that's not always easy for the golden boy. I worshipped Buddy. He was bright and sweet and funny. But he was also human. He had feelings. And in our family, certain feelings, most of them, Meant weakness. Did it make you and your brother close? I thought he was perfect. I can see now he was he was calling out to me for help, but I couldn't hear him. I was too busy trying to be perfect too. In the moment I realized how much trouble he was in. Was one moment too late. Why don't you tell me about that moment? I was 14. I came home from school one day. It was one of those brutal Chicago winters. The wind off the lake is so cold that it starts getting dark around four. I'll never know why. But I felt something was wrong as soon as I walked into the house. My mother wasn't home. I called to Buddy. He didn't answer. So I started running up the stairs. The hallway to his room seemed to be ten miles long. As I walked through the door, I was so relieved to see him. And then I saw the gun. It was too late to stop. Julie, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I feel very proud that you chose me to tell this to him. Well, you may regret it. That's only chapter one. And there's a lot more.
Hey, you've been through enough tonight. You don't have to tell me anymore. Tonight was no picnic for you either. Well, I didn't have to work on Cooper. Cooper, unfortunately, didn't die. That cop did. Yeah, no, my second corpse in a week. Getting used to it. Yeah, right. We'd better get back. Burgess will have our heads. What's left of them? Prince. I really am glad you're here. That makes two of us. Dr. Harmon, I already have a mother. I don't need another one. No, I just realized that the rest of us, we've already dealt with Cooper before, and tonight was your first time. And your point is? Well, you and Dr. Falk were, were good friends. What's that got to do with the price of adhesive tape? To have saved the life of the guy that killed him couldn't have been a lot of fun. Don't let this get around. I'm a doctor. Saving lives is part of the job description, as any intern should know by now. I'm vaguely aware of it. So then what's this all about? I just wanted to offer you some... Some what? Nothing. Obviously, I was wrong. Okay, I've heard noise before. So, how's it going? Fine. Hmm, how is he? Well, I, I really... I really am. Thanks for asking. It's more than I could have expected from... Hello, I'm, uh, looking for Dr. Burgess. Oh, she's right through that door. Thank you. She doesn't have an easy job, man. Thanks again for coming so soon. Well, if I'm ever allowed to send one again, I'll make sure that I get my bill to you. <laughs> Listen, I've already told you my reservations about these interns. I am afraid that having Cooper in this hospital is going to push one or more of them over the edge. How were you at checking in with Burgess? Apologize for flying off the handle. I thought the lectures were over, Frank. Well, I thought you were going to start using your head. Look, well, why don't you go find Joel and see how she's doing? Yeah, I was about to. We've got a patient coming into trauma one. Are you saying that I've been leading Joe on? I didn't say anything. But you're thinking it. Okay, here's the thing. To me, when a man and a woman become soulmates, as you say. I think they're walking a very fine line, and they need to keep that in mind. If they don't, they could get in trouble. But unless, of course, you really wanted to um, get into that particular kind of trouble. <sighs> okay. I love Jagger, and I'm married. I would never cheat on him. But have you told Jagger about this special friendship you have with Joe? No. Should I have? No, no, not at innocent as you say it is. I barely get to talk to Jagger on the phone, and when I do, we have our own problems to discuss. I don't doubt that. But are you sure Joe Scanlon isn't one of those problems? 